With so many of you having man eaters out there now, I figured we should look at some man eater specific teams. And there's no team better than the one we're going to talk about today, the bat eater. <laughs> Welcome on the Deadwood Jedi. This is going to be another Raid Shadow Legends video. We are going to be looking at this Bat Eater team. It is one of my favorite teams that is built out there. One of the oldest clan boss teams that we've uh, speed tuned as well. Um, but yeah, you can definitely find it on my website along with so many other things. Um, but yeah, I have it over there. It is an insanely good team. Uh, one I highly recommend. It might be the best one out there. And one of the reasons why it's very simple team it works on all affinities full auto um literally all affinities full auto can one key at every difficulty as well so you can get your auto teams in now the difficulty is you need two man eaters and there's only one dps slot which means you're a little bit limited in who you're going to bring in so when we're looking at this and i kind of want to do a little bit of a different breakdown than i usually do with clan boss i want to talk specifically about you know things to look out for with the bad eater team you know one of those being your dps choice now I'm actually going to be bringing Whisper into the team today, but I don't necessarily recommend Whisper. In fact, I absolutely don't recommend Whisper. There's plenty of other champions that you can choose from. The big key is you want to make sure they have they hit hard, they bring decreased defense, and they bring weaken. That's the ideal. Now, not every time can you do that, and you can get away with other champions, right? Geomancer can definitely one key with this team. I've seen a lot of successful teams with that. He only brings weakened debuff, but he brings a lot of other stuff, so he's really, really good. I'm hoping Whisper can do the same today. Um, you can definitely do it with champions that just bring decreased defense as well. It's one of the best debuffs. Ninja is one of the top damage dealers for a bad eater team, as an example. I know, don't get me in the comments. I get it. Not everybody has them. It's frustrating, whatever. Point is that you're really looking for those two main debuffs. Jintoro is an excellent choice. Anax can work really well here. There are variants that support these kinds of champions. And I have all those really listed here on the website. So if you go there, you'll be able to see that. Uh, and we can talk and, and it goes into detail on the things you need to do. And actually you need to increase the speeds of the other champions. Um, with Jintori, you just need to make sure you start with an A1 instead of his A, like I think you, I think uh, Seeker, you need to start with Seeker's A1, right? Just give a little bit of delay and then everything falls into sync. There's many ways to make these variations work really well with the Bad Eater team. Um, and that's one of the best parts about it. It's a really secure team. It's really hard to mess it up, honestly. Um, and so it becomes an excellent, excellent source uh, and option if you can do it. The hard part, hard part is the speeds. I mean, your slowest champion is 220 speed. I guess 218 technically, but basically 220 speed is your slowest champion. That's your DPS. So it can be really hard to build this team because most everybody is 240 speed or faster. And so for a lot of early players, that can be a really, really tough hurdle to climb. And that's really one of the reasons why people won't choose this team. But once you get the speeds, once you can make these speeds, you 100% want to build this team because it works. Like I said, all difficulties, full auto, and it can one key are all difficulties as well. So definitely a team I would recommend building. Thank you so much for coming out to watch this video. If you like it, please take the time, hit that subscription button, easiest way to support my channel. And if you enjoy these videos and don't want to miss the next one, hit that notification bell as well. Let's, let's take a look real quick at the setup I have. With Whisper, I'm prioritizing the A1 because we're only getting weakened, not decreased defense. So we're not going to get the extra turn here from the A3, which would be lovely to have, but we're just not going to get it. So what we are going to get instead is an increased attack crit rate and hopefully ignore defense on that A2 ability because we should have the weakened debuff up. Uh, I'm tempted to turn that A3 completely off, but I have a feeling it's going to hit hard enough where it's worth keeping on. Uh, but we do get weakened from the A1 here. That's not really what's important. What's important is Seeker. We can open with this A1 now with the A2 ability. Now, here's the thing. We can also open with the A1 ability right here, and it will work perfectly. And this is something you want to do if you're using a champion like Jintoro. Um, I think even if you're using a champion like Anax, um, but you can do it either way and it'll work. But for a champion like Jintoro that gets a boost off the turn meter uh, from Seeker, you need to open with that A1. Just kind of keep that in mind. But we can actually open with it, so that'll be good. Give us a little increased attack buff early. The fast man eater, we're opening with the A3 ability and prioritizing it. The slow man eater, we're opening with the A1 but still prioritizing the A3, so that'll be the next skill used. 
and then Painkeeper were opening with the A1, we're prioritizing that, or the A3, we're prioritizing that, and then the A2 becomes the next skill we're prioritizing. You need to put those in here. If you don't, it will mess it up on lower difficulties when you don't take enough damage to actually force Painkeeper to use that A2 skill. Just, just remember that. That's what's going to mess you up. But other than that, we're pretty straightforward, good to go, so let's just jump on in. All right, as we jump in here, you can see we get that unkillable ability going up. We get that increased attack from Seeker. And so it's going to take us a minute to get to our full strength here, I think. Um, yeah, that A3 seems to be pretty good. You know, good good 200,000 damage. I'm okay with that. Um, but it's going to take us a minute because we're getting those cruelty debuffs from Seeker. We need some time for that to ramp up. Obviously, it's not really going to have much of an effect on... Well, it's going to have an effect. But Whisper's already getting a lot of ignored defense from that uh, from the blessing that she has, which is the Crushing Rend. That's going to do a lot of work for us. You're also going to notice this, the Man Eaters are doing like 50, 70, you know, thousand damage. Nothing crazy. There's a reason for that. The big reason that we don't have decreased defense. We still don't have decreased defense. And if you'll notice, we're not landing the weaken either. I'm kind of tempted to take away... That A3 skill, I feel like that might be nerfing our damage just a little bit. The reason why that it, the weaken is so important, obviously it adds to our damage, but also it means that Whisper's A2 will completely ignore damage. So it turns that hit from like a, I don't know, 100,000 hit to like a 300,000 hit, just like that, uh, which is why having that weaken up is so important and might be a reason to, to keep that A3 turned off for us, just to ensure we keep the weaken up. Um, not a guaranteed chance, but we can just roll the dice too. I like rolling the dice. And you'll see, obviously, with the Relentless, with the extra turns that she brings naturally, we're going to get a lot of turns, a lot of attacks from Whisper, and that's going to be crucial to us doing a lot of damage in the long term, right? We need her to take those extra turns as much as possible. She also gets extra turns from her A1, another reason why the A3 might, we might have wanted to turn it off, but we're going to try it out anyway. There you go. Get a couple extra attacks in there, do some really good damage. And you can see, it's very early. We're already doing over a million damage per turn. You can also see how many poisons we're getting up there. We're having like three to four of them up all the time. You know, one of the things we could be doing is uh, we could have made another man eater with toxic. We could have even put sneaker in toxic. Um, I don't think we want to go crazy with it because we just want to make sure we don't overfill the debuff bar. Um, so that's something that you'd want to monitor as you're building your team. Figure out what's going to be best for you. How much debuffs do I need? You know, can I add some more toxic sets? Do I need to take some away? Uh, figure that out depending on the champions that you're bringing in here. So I don't know if this is going to one key. Obviously, we do really good damage, but, you know, those man eaters are doing 77,000 damage, even with the weekend up there, uh, 50,000 damage, 60,000 damage. In all my builds with the decreased defense and weekend out there, we're talking 100,000 damage at least, if not more. So there's definitely some damage we're leaving off the table just based on our DPS alone. So we need to kind of balance those things in our minds. Keep that keep that in our heads. What would be a better choice here? I would honestly prefer, I would probably use somebody like a Bellinor instead of a Whisper. But I want to try this out. I want to see what could be done. Um, so anyway, we're going to see how this runs. Uh, let's show the champions the build so you guys can get an idea of that. And then we'll come back towards the end. So let's first take a look at the champions and how I built them here. Um, I'll go over all kind of the reasons why I made the choices I did. So we can start off with Whisper, who I think is absolutely phenomenal champion. Not ideal for this build. I think I've gone over this already, but not my first choice. I mostly just want to see what she can't do because she has one of the best blessings in this game in Crushing Ren at six star. Anything less than six star, I don't recommend using Crushing Ren, to be honest. Uh, but because at this level, she's going to be ignoring a huge amount of defense. Um, that I feel like we can actually get away with using Whisper, who does not bring a decreased defense to the attack, which is going to hurt everybody else's damage. But hopefully, she'll make up for it. That's kind of the idea behind this. Um, but yeah, I have her in Relentless gear. Relentless works wonders on bad ears. One of the few clan boss teams where you can actually use Relentless, use champions that have extra turns uh, for this boss. So I highly recommend. Uh, this is one of the re reasons why it's such a good, such a good team to use, honestly. Um, as far as masteries go, I did go down the support tree here. Now, normally I would go down the defensive tree. Again, getting, I think it's deterrence, the one that gives you free counterattacks, is the best part about using man-eater teams because you're always losing health. So it's a lot, really easy to get free counterattacks and get extra attacks, or extra attacks, 
We were a little shy on the accuracy, though, and that's kind of important for Whisper. We do need, we really want to land that weakened debuff that's going to be really important for her build. So I went ahead and just kept her in what I already had her in. Um, and again, I could incorporate her skills that give her that increased crit rate buff. But again, I already had her pretty much built. I didn't want to switch everything around. That's why she has 100% over 100% crit rate. Otherwise, I would probably try to take her down to that 70% and rely on the buffs themselves to really do the extra work for us. Um, in this case, I would still prioritize the A2. I want to make sure I have that crit rate buff um, and then prioritize the A3 after that so she gets the extra turn. I guess you could prioritize A3. It's an extra turn, so it gets it down a three-turn cooldown, really. Um, but yeah, that would be my approach if I were going to do this. Um, and then we can go on to uh, Seeker. Now, Seeker is the one I use in my main clan boss team. He's insane. Also, six-star ascended i just happen to get really lucky with these um but the blessing is cruelty obviously that's going to be really important again for decreasing the defense another reason why i feel like we can get away without having a decreased defense champion on this team uh seeker's insanely good we do have all the masteries we want going down the defensive tree this is pretty much picture perfect of how you would build your masteries on a man eater team go down the offensive tree down to war master or giant slayer uh, making sure to picking up life drinker to heal up making sure that we're taking um, as well that we're... The one thing I would say is take Grim Resolve. Don't take Heart of Glory like I have on my Seeker, but I'm not going to change that for this. Um, and then Defensive Tree all the way down to deter or Retribution, I should say, to get some free counterattacks. Deterrence doesn't really help us, but, you know, there it is. Um, but yeah, Seeker's phenomenal for us in this kind of a team. Um, in addition to that... Of course, we've got our two man eaters, which are always going to be really good and can do a heck of a lot of damage. So not champions that you want to forget about. Now, the slow man eater here is going faster than Painkeeper. That is something that we want to try to maintain uh, is going faster than Painkeeper. Also having a toxic set. We don't have a toxic champ. We don't have any poisons on this team. So bringing in two toxic champions really actually helps a lot. So I have man. One of the man eaters is in toxic as well. Um, that's something you'll want to pay attention to. Don't overfill your D, your you know debuff bar. You can only have ten debuffs, right? Um, but with him, we do have ideal masteries going down the offensive tree and defensive tree again. So definitely uh, an approach I would take there. Um, but basically, we're just putting on as much damage as we can because he can hit really really hard. Same with the other man eater, who obviously is going faster at two sixty eight. This is going to be the fastest champion in this team, and the speeds is really what you know limits a bad eater team when you're choosing a team. Um, but if you can make it, it's definitely worth it. Again, trying to make maximize the damage with the crit rate, the crit damage, the attack on these champions. And again, going down the offense and defensive tree. Um, this fast man eater actually has exactly the masteries that we want. Um, you know, absolutely everything else that you would take on them would be superfluous, isn't going to help or hinder based off this particular team. But those are the ones that you ideally would want to take. And then very last, of course, we have pain keeper. Now, Painkeeper, you can take retribution. You can go down the defense tree, but it is kind of tricky because if you have him, too, if you have her too fast, she's going to outspeed your seeker and throw your team off. So there are some guidance on the website about this. I think you need to be about eight speeds slower than seeker, which I am, but I didn't switch up the masteries here. Um, and so that's just something you're going to want to keep in mind. If you're, it, it's also like next level, right? If you don't really care that much. I recommend sticking with the masteries I have here going down the support tree to maximize the healing that again helps you get some extra counterattacks um, and then just avoiding anything that's going to affect turn meter control. The hard part with her is, of course, she has turn meter boost on her A1. And so you don't want extra counterattacks if you're not speed tuned for it. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind. Again, toxic set on her. Hopefully between the two of them, we'll have a full debuff bar.
too shabby. Not too shabby. Now, definitely the rest of the damage is lower across the board because we don't have decreased defense. That's something you just have to kind of keep in mind and sucks, right? Uh, but this is also why I don't recommend using Whisper. I only recommend her if you have a six-star blessing and want to use Crushing Rend and, like, OP gear to make this work. So we barely hit that one key threshold. But as you can see, you don't necessarily need crazy OP champions to do that. Um, if you have decreased defense, I mean, we're talking like an extra, you know, three to four million damage across the board for every champion there, at least for the man eaters and the seeker. Like, it's crazy the extra damage you get from that. So you can have a fairly subpar lead champion, DPS champion, and still do really good. I mean, you can one key with champions like Fane, uh, Anax, right? Other epic champions, even so why I think Aina's actually a really good choice, especially with Relentless gear. Um, so there's definitely, you know, plenty of champions that can do this result for you. Now, to be fair, you have one DPS champion. So affinity definitely matters as far as making sure that you can get the result that you want. So that's definitely something you're going to want to keep in mind. And, you know, at high levels, if you have extra champions to build, you may want to build multiple champions based off the affinity that you're facing. That's totally a reasonable thing to do. Um, or you just build somebody really, really, really strong. Build everybody really strong, then you don't have to worry about it. Uh, but as you can see, really good result here. So Bad Eater Team, definitely the one I recommend using if you can do it. If you have two Man Eaters, you have a Seeker, 100% recommend this. There are other options if you don't have a Seeker. No other options if you don't have two Man Eaters. So definitely that's kind of the limitation here. Um, but yeah, like I said, you can look those up on the website. There's Deacon version. There's Mashal versions. I think there's even uh, uh Razzlevarg version of this team. So there's definitely some options outside of using uh seeker just not other options outside of using man eater so just kind of keep that in mind when you're building this team but one key all affinities full auto like a lot of potential to this team and definitely something i recommend building if you have the choices outside of you know some of the myth teams the myth air myth food teams i think this is the best team out there to be quite frank with you guys this is the top plan boss team that's available to us so Anyway, hopefully you guys found this helpful. It's a, you know, it's a build it, it's a set and forget it kind of team. Um, so if you did find this useful, definitely hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss the next one of my videos. It is a pleasure as always. And until next we meet, I'm the Deadwood Jedi.